Yo guys, watch this. So recently our hand towels have been getting really smelly from all the hand washing. So I came up with an idea. What if I can repurpose our Dyson hairdryer into a hand dryer but still retain its original hair drying capability? I cannot up version 1 of the hand dryer converter. The idea is simple. The hair dryer sits in the cradle while this clamp thingy clamps down on top. A server moves the hair dryer switch on or off via a slider whenever the motion detector detects movement. If I want to grab the hair dryer out of the cradle and use it as a normal hair dryer, there is an ultrasonic sensor that detects my hand on the handle and instantly opens up. I'm using a geared motor and some bevel gears to automate the clamp. There's a little push button right here that confirms if the hair dryer is in the cradle or not. And ta-da! Here is the first version. So, uh, it, on first inspection, I might have miscalculated how thick the shaft of the Dyson hairdryer was. It turns out that the Dyson pre catted file that I was using was dimensionally inaccurate. A good thing is that the slider that I made clicked in really well. I made this press fit notch design which I'm kind of proud of because of how clean the solution is. I mean, if I force it in, like, I'm pressing with quite a decent amount of force. It does work. The ultrasonic sensor fits, which is nice. Moving on, it's time to print out the base. Oh, okay, let go. What am I doing? Ta-da! So I added this red push button from JCar. Then I reprinted the clamp with the right tolerances. I also added this gear. It fits really well, and it opens and closes really smoothly. The slider also slides really smoothly. Now we have the motor. I want you to guess the problem. I'll give you five seconds. Okay, so yes, so the bevel gears that I decided to use were, they were like practically impossible for my 3D printer to print. The teeth, they're just too tiny and the motor I'm using is a geared motor, meaning it will literally rip those teeth off the gear at store speeds. Bro, my gear. So that didn't work, but after a little break, I started making my second iteration. So this time, instead of an insanely overpowered motor, I'm using another servo. And this should be a much better design choice. Okay, test run! I once again miscalculated the dimensions of the servo, so I had to excavate with my pliers to make way for the servo. Eventually, I got it to fit snugly. So I finally managed to get most of the parts correct and all the dimensions correct. So it's time for the actual components, the electrical components. After a few hours of vibe coding, I finally managed to make those servos move. It's working. If I simulate my hand holding the hairdryer right here, it opens. And the motion detector detects my hand, which turns on the server. Yo, I got so much of this 3D printed trees and... I don't got any desk space anymore. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? So the barrel jack screw terminal adapter was faulty. So I have to go back to JCar to get a new one. That's JCar right there. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what improvements I made for our next print. This base, right? Instead of this being just this little thing, right? It's gonna extend all the way down so that when you put the Dyson head right in, it will actually keep its orientation and it won't like move around in its little cup holder. Another change is that right here, this little cylinder, this orange cylinder, it's too thin to keep its own weight. So every time the server moves, it actually starts bending and doesn't actually move the whole piece. So instead, what I'm doing is, um, reprinting this slider so that this little extrusion extrudes a bit more out so that's another change and one more thing is that i'm reprinting the servo holder because as you can see all those scratches i've been using pliers to you know destroy some of the material to fit the server in. okay this is the newest one it's got all the modifications on it let's see if this one works yeah so it's 4 30 a.m and i'm still working on this for the past eight hours but finally we got this little um, extrusion upwards which fits really nice if I just press it in oh 
Very nice. Solid. So I finally got everything working, all the electronics, and this is my first test. Um. Okay. Okay, test run. Put it in. Thing closes. Put a hand below. Yep, it works. It's win. It closes, yes. Out. In. Hand. Hello. Yep. There we go. Okay, it works. Let's go. Let's take it out. Nice. Okay, since I got it working after like four hours at night, I finally decided to switch from my precious Arduino to a cheap and powerful ESP32 so that I can still use my Arduino for future projects. Let me just tell you, coding an ESP32 is almost the exact same thing as coding an Arduino. It's just you gotta install a few different libraries onto the Arduino IDE and a few drivers as well. And then you just change up the pin numbers and you're done. Okay, I hot glued everything. Looks like a jumble of mess, but if it works, it works. It's my first project anyways. Let's see if it works. For those nerds out there, I used a 9 volt wall plug and then a DC to DC buck converter to step it down to 5.2 volts, which then powered all my sensors and servers. Yes, I know some of you are going to say, why not just buy a 5 volt wall plug? Well, you see, I want a higher volt wall plug just in case I needed a higher voltage for future projects. To stick my contraption onto the bathroom wall, I used some really strong double sided foam tape. And now it's time for the final test. Dun dun dun! So it works. There were a few quirks that I discovered. One of them is that if I stand really far away, sometimes it will still go off. But there's nothing a little duct tape can't fix. Okay, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.